I'm not a gambling man, but I'm willing to bet a show like Dynasty has some shocking secrets to uncover. This primetime soap drama really struck gold. Or should I say oil? Well, black gold. Black gold is the term. And between giving even Dallas a run for its money, and quite literally shaping American fashion in the 1980s, Dynasty was a powerhouse program with lots of secrets to reveal. I'm your host, Nostalgic Nick, here to share all the inside details about the famous and infamous Carringtons and Colbys. If you enjoy this deep dive, be sure to give it a thumbs up for us, and subscribe to the channel so you never miss an episode. Without further ado, let's seek our fortunes with Dynasty. Oil. Dynasty pits the Carringtons against the Colbys in a turf war, a scheming sabotage fest for power and wealth and more power. And the title Dynasty is clear, with the families the rulers of their own dynasties. But the show nearly tapped even closer to its roots with the proposed title Oil. Jump back a decade before Dynasty, and America suffered a major oil crisis and energy shortage. Originally, Dynasty took place during that oil crisis, and showed both low-level workers and the wealthy oil magnate families. You make it sound so competitive. It's not a contest, man. But after a bit of audience testing, producers learned that people didn't want the low-level stories. Those were common to blue-collar America. People wanted a look behind the palace walls. Producers also took inspiration from I, Claudius, a book-turned-TV series about the Roman emperor of the same name. And Game of Thrones writer George R. R. Martin would be inspired by the very same for his brilliant betrayals. And I can definitely see the similarities with Dynasty. For example, they modeled Alexis directly after Livia. They made one final tweak by changing the family names from the Parkhursts and the Corbys to the Carringtons and the Colbys. Real and Fake Glamour Famous TV Rivalries Enter Bewitched and Genie The Munsters and Adams Family Well, Dynasty hit a similar niche as its own rival, Dallas. One of the ways it tried to stand out isn't what you'd expect. Dynasty tried for an especially glamorous wardrobe. And to do that, the show recruited some creative minds in the fashion world. One was costume designer Trevia, famous for dressing Marilyn Monroe in that infamous potato sack to prove, yes, she does look great in everything. As for the jewelry, designer Nolan Miller made those, whenever the show didn't use gems from Tiffany's. A lot of the jewelry Miller made wasn't real. He designed them to simply appear dazzling. Must have been terribly expensive. It was. Then of course, there's the revolutionary shoulder pads. Miller took inspiration from Joan Crawford's wardrobe back in the 40s, and he personally designed 3,000 different outfits, so no character ever wore the same outfit twice. A lot of work required a steep budget of $35,000. Case of the Disappearing Cast during its nearly 10-year run, Dynasty went through some cast changes, which is tough for fans who must watch their favorites move away, or worse, fall off a cliff. Why, Fallon? Why'd you leave me? Well, we lost Lee Brigere as Joseph, the major domo, because of a fight with producer Aaron Spelling. His crime was wanting more screen time for his character and better pay for himself. Also, Catherine Oxenberg's Amanda Bedford, the secret daughter of Alexis and Blake, left the show after Catherine had similar contract disputes. Dynasty was pretty revolutionary for its time for having one of the first prominent gay characters in the cast. I am a man. Just not your kind. Played by Al Corley. But when they misstepped with a cure storyline, Corley quit the show out of protest. This departure reshaped the plot, now having Steve Carrington get into an accident which required plastic surgery. So, new Steve, aka Jack Coleman's different appearance would slide. Shaping the rules. There were some big name guest stars on Dynasty 2. We got to see Rock Hudson in season five as the horse master and almost lover of Crystal, but his Daniel Reese would sadly be Hudson's last role. When Dynasty was filming, the AIDS epidemic was in full swing. 
and not yet fully understood. None of the Dynasty crew knew Hudson had AIDS, and Linda Evans herself was confused when they never shared a passionate kiss. Sadly, Hudson's health deteriorated, forcing the off-screen death of his character, as Hudson himself passed away and his secret was revealed. Back then, many people thought AIDS was transferred through saliva, so many fans worried for Evans' health. As a direct result of this worry, the Screen Actors Guild instilled a rule requiring performers to get notice before any open mouth kissing scenes, and recommended against kissing between at-risk groups. Keeping the Actors in Suspense being a series regular doesn't always equal job security, and Dynasty had no problem offing some of its cast. And if Game of Thrones reminded you of Dynasty, the similarities run deeper than you may realize. While Game of Thrones shocked the world with the Red Wedding episode, Dynasty already did it. With the Moldavian Massacre, where terrorists sprayed bullets into the crowd at Amanda and Prince Michael's wedding, it was one of the cliffhangers of the decade, and not just for viewers. Even the cast had no idea idea who survived. The closest hint was how much blood the makeup team put on you. So if you were really bloody, you called your agent and started the job hunt again. This cliffhanger even gave Dallas's Who Shot JR competition, and people everywhere started wearing shirts that read, I survived the Moldavian Massacre. Keep it secret, keep it safe. Dynasty prided itself on intrigue and cliffhangers. You'll remember the surprise twist where Dominique says she's a Carrington. Then right on cue, the season ends and everyone has to wait for the fallout. Let's just say that I feel as I do because we have so much in common. But Dynasty wrote and filmed several different plot twists for this finale, so not even the cast knew what the actual ending was. Another had Dominique saying she's Cecil Colby's ex-wife, and in another ending she says she's Kirby Anders' mother. It's a pretty genius way of keeping literally everyone on their stiletto toes. Of course, anything with parent-child dynamics gets pretty surprising when you realize that Joan Collins and Gordon Thompson, who were supposed to be mother and son, were just a 11 years apart in age. Cat fights, pond plights. Dynasty is also famous for its rivalries. Who can forget the hate Crystal and Alexis would throw at each other? All that escalated into a gown wearing cat fight in a lily pond. A real brawl for the ages. Miserable bitch! It looked like they could easily push each other deep under the water, but they filmed in shallow water at a Pasadena manor. Joan Collins and Linda Evans were on their knees, duking it out in water that was only about two and a half feet deep. They had a tough time making it look real, and when the director set them free, everyone on set laughed and clapped. The shot took all day, but Evans wasn't complaining because the brawls were her favorite, while Collins loved the arguments. Franchise the Dynasty By audience demand, Dynasty made heroes out of the greedy and had people rooting for their favorite cutthroats among the elite. So it's too fitting that in a move Blake Carrington himself would have loved, the show capitalized a lot on that merchandise. Dynasty had its own beauty and clothing line. Fans could get a $3 pantyhose, forever crystal perfume selling for 150 bucks, or collector's dolls of Alexis and Crystal for the low price of 10,000 smackaroos. And super dedicated fans could even get a $200,000 coat in style with all the Carrington's flashy get-ups. And people bought this stuff, selling over $400 million worth of merch. Housing a legend. Even though Dynasty took place in Denver, they shot some parts in San Francisco's Filoli Estate. The mansion is 36,000 square feet with 43 rooms, 17 bathrooms, and 17 fireplaces. Only 17? Residents can visit the property. For everyone else, they need to wait for special events, like when the former Dynasty house hosted the Filoli Flower Show. Instead of deep oil veins, the house had 50,000 tulips and 15,000 daffodils. But if you can't make it there, you can also see the gorgeous estate in the 1978 film Heaven Can Wait. Now a lot of plotting went into digging up these fun tidbits, but it was worth it. So what surprised you the most? Did anyone out there have some Dynasty merch? A lunchbox or a Lexus doll that's still hanging around your spare room? Well, let us know in the comments below, and let's all share our favorite episodes or story arcs of this legendary primetime drama. And if you enjoyed this digging, don't forget to like and subscribe so you'll hear the latest gossip from Denver and beyond from all of us here at Do You 
remember, thanks so much for watching.